You can resist that. This is perfect. It's so, so good. Hello and welcome to the Views Club. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make lentil soup. And to pair my lentil soup, I'm going to be showing you how I make empanadas. And I've switched them up just a little bit. And the best part is that I found this delicious maseca that is yellow in color. It's a little bit of a smaller bag, but it's definitely worth it. So if you're interested in watching how I make lentil soup, please keep watching. I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to be adding the vegetarian option uh, throughout the video, but the recipe is going to be up. It's going to be the regular lentil soup and a vegetarian one. And I just want you guys to make it comfortable for your home. So let's get to it. Hi. Okay, let's get this party started. <laughs> okay, guys, well, we're going to need in a nice steep pot. And when you're making lentils, you want to make sure that you have a good steep pot or your calculations for your lentils are accurate because they do double in size. So what I have in here is I'm going to be pouring in six cups of hot water. And I usually use this because it saves me time from boiling my water but it's six cups exactly of water, okay? And to our pot, we're gonna add our lentils, and I have two cups of lentils. I've already washed them, took out all the nasty stuff, and after this step, I'll show you guys exactly why you wanna wash your lentils. I don't want you to get scared or discouraged, but we do have to clean up our, our grains when we use them, okay, guys? Okay, Make sure you get all of them. Every little one counts. Okay, and to our blend, I'm going to add one-fourth of salt, okay? What we're going to do now with our lentils is we're going to bring this pot to a boil. Once we bring this pot to a boil, we're going to put it on a low, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to boil this in the back because we have some other things going on that's going to speed up our process and make it a lot easier for you guys at home. This is a beautiful way to get your family to eat lentils if they're not familiar with. Uh, the soup or the lentils themselves because a lot of kids don't like them. Okay, my kids have been there But now they do um, The game changer is bacon or if you don't have bacon use chorizo and if you don't eat pork Then keep it out. You don't need all these ingredients. Okay, you can do the same steps that I'm doing Just keep the pork part out uh, What I did for my portion for the pork is that I picked one piece of bacon per person that I'm going to be serving and today I'm making soup for eight so I have eight pieces of chopped bacon. And I'm telling you guys right now, I used to be that person that was not too happy with lentil soup until my mom made it this way. She messed around in the kitchen and I think I get that from her. Like I'll play with an ingredient until I get it just right for my family to enjoy. So I'm going to cook these for a little bit on a medium uh, heat just so we can get all the nice uh, pork fat to come out of our bacon. Okay, as I mentioned, the reason you want to clean and wash your lentils, this is just some of the stuff from the last wash because I washed it three times. I usually do that with my grains, wash it three to four times depending on the water color and what comes out. And there's little specks, they look like rocks or seeds from the branch that they were in, but if my kids bite into this, it's gonna hurt their teeth. And you kinda don't wanna get them stuck and discourage anybody from eating your food. So make sure you wash your lentils so you can avoid some of these little specks. I wish I could tell you what they are, I have no idea. But you know I know how to clean beans. I'm wondering if they're rocks. <laughs> they look like rocks, you think so, Klaus? Yep. 
I don't know. They almost look like the seed from the lentil that didn't um, sprout. And some of them look like rocks. And then some of them look like I don't know what. Whatever it is, nobody's eating rocks. Don't. <laughs> I don't want you guys eating rocks. This isn't like, uh, what's that movie called? The Never Ending Story? That guy that eats rocks? I don't want you guys to be the rock guy, okay? So let's get back to cooking. Okay, this took me about seven minutes to get to this point. But if you notice, I have way too much pork. Uh, fat so I'm gonna be taking a little bit out. I do want to keep a lot of it in here But we're gonna take be taking most of it out. So just give me a second So I dumped if you guys saw I dumped most of it out. I still have enough Fat in there and look at I think that's like one-fourth of a cup that came out There's a family member that likes to eat their eggs only with bacon fat. Yes, and I got harassed guys <laughs> if I can make their eggs with bacon fat and it was It was a little bit overwhelming during the circumstances that it was going on with but okay friends i'm going to be dividing i'm only going to be using half of the ingredients that i have here for your recipe at home you're more than welcome to use the portions i mentioned to you but for me to cut some time um, and feed all my family happily i'm going to be dividing because half of it's going to be vegetarian and half of it is going to be um with bacon and baby my little one and my sister and sometimes i'm not up for certain proteins so i join in on that one too but because my sister had a really bad week actually of work last week <laughs> this is what we're gonna treat her with and I I tend to do that a lot with my whole family so if you have family that works hard and doesn't always have the time to get the meal set make them a tray of food guys they would love you for that so let's go ahead and add half okay and then half of my garlic before any vegetarian person gets worked up, I'm okay with cross-contamination of protein. Yeah, you're I'm good. I'm definitely okay with that. But I won't cross-contaminate you because I'll take some of that and put it in other no, pot. No, but I mean with the spoon because this spoon is used for the bacon. Mm -hmm. I'm, okay, I'm okay with that. There's a lot of people that are like, oh my goodness. You, you know what it is for me? Like whenever I cook for you, I even use a different spoon. Mm -hmm. It's no, just habit. It really is. So what we're going to do is we're going to saute those vegetables right here. Um, the other thing that I want to mention to you guys is that if you're not going to be using um, or making the empanadas or anything crispy on the side, you can make this a plain dish by adding uh, finely chopped potatoes. Just small little potatoes will go really good in here. But since I'm going to be doing empanadas on the side, um, that's the carb that I'm giving my family. So that's that's what we're doing. Oh my gosh, when those veggies hit there with the garlic. Woo! Oh girl, get in here. Magic! So for my vegetarian option, all I'm doing is adding a little bit of oil. And what we're going to do in this pan, we're just going to saute the rest of these ingredients that we used. You'll see that I'm using uh, chicken bouillon for this part, but at home, if you're a vegetarian, use whatever uh, vegetarian uh, bouillon you have. I'm saying it like that guys because somebody was really like bothered by the way that I say it. Or I want you to say it bouillon. Bouillon. No, bouillon. Bouillon. Mm -hmm. I say bouillon and if I if I get correct all the things that I say with my accent, then Girl, that's not me. Yeah. Then that wouldn't be me. So, say but I, I just think it was very particular how like the, the comment, because you guys know that I do read all your comments, how it was like I was not understanding what you're saying almost as if a lot of people just come on my channel to correct my behaviors, but they can talk to my mom for hours. They're not going to get anywhere, guys. Love you all, but... And I, I don't want to say that I'm stubborn, because I'm not. I'm like, I change often. I'm just particular, okay? I consider my source. <laughs> I do that when I go through, like, animal rescue videos on YouTube, and then uh -huh. I see people putting mean comments, and I'm like, out of the entire video, that's what you took from that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about, hey, you saved the animals. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously. All we're doing is keeping it the same, just sauteing this, and you're going to saute it for a good, like, six minutes until your tomatoes get a little bit soft. We're back over here with our bacon, and thank you, Claude, for that angle. Like, wow. <laughs> I'm doing ergonomic work. Yeah. Right now. Are you? <laughs> oh, wow. Yoga? yoga? Angle. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, so once you've sauteed these ingredients, it's going to take you about six minutes. You want to add your chicken bouillon. Your bouillon. <laughs> add 
After you add your chicken bouillon, you want to add your cumin. And your cumin is optional, but it definitely gives it a really good flavor, guys. I am known to add turmeric to a lot of my food, so that's optional for you guys as well. Today, I'm skipping it because I've been adding it to everything for the kids um, these past few weeks. So I'm switching up the flavors for them so they don't get used to it and they don't never know what's coming to them. Because, you know, kids are very smart. They build up that habit like, oh, my mom made this. I didn't like it. I'm going to refuse no matter how she makes it. So me switching it up for my kids all the time keeps them guessing if they're going to like it. Keeps them like open minded about the food. <gasps> what is it, puppy? He's crying for me. He wants his mother. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and switch my pot and I need to get some lentils out of that pot. So just give me one second. For me, I already know how to eyeball what I need and about how much liquid I need in here. So I'll base it off of that when I switch it. But on your end, um, do go ahead and do uh, three cups of water per cup of lentils, okay? Of uncooked lentils. Just keep it going, Mama. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the same thing over here, we're going to add our, our bouillon, whatever you guys choose to use, and the cumin. I know you guys spotted that oil back there, that's for our empanadas. I definitely season my empanadas depending on the dishes that I'm making usually, or even my tortillas for uh, my maseca for the tortillas, I usually season that differently as well. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> You guys missed it. I almost burned myself. So you guys know I'm not being dramatic. Use a heat proof plate when you're transferring because this one pulled a lot of heat through. Please be careful, my friends. We'll stop using a napkin for that. <laughs> well, you know what? I try to offer you an oven mitt or something. It's just sometimes the oven mitts are too thick for me. Maybe I can use those uh, gloves from the curling iron, you know? Sweetie, maybe you can use this one. Um, I like it, but mm, no. Mm. You know which one I'm talking about for oh. curling your hair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That hand glove? That's I wonder if that would work. Maybe. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay. So pepper is a very, very strong flavor. It can make it really spicy. You can add it or you can keep it out. For me, I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. Just slightly. And then I'm going to go ahead and season my other one a little bit with pepper. So I have this on a very low heat almost simmer and we're gonna let it simmer for another 10 minutes so it's gonna take you anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to cook your lentils properly so now what we're gonna do to our lentils we're gonna go ahead and add all of these delicious ingredients including the fat everything I'm gonna add a little bit of the liquid in here just so that we have all that flavor to come out I always feel once you introduce your um, your family or your loved ones to a different style of a certain thing they usually don't like, for example, lentils, once you introduce it like this, perhaps they're more open to try it different ways. 
Okay, these bo both of these pots have been cooking for five minutes, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and add the carrots and the zucchinis. One thing I don't like is my vegetables to be too overdone. And the best part about these veggies is if, if you wanna use two zucchinis, you can use two. You wanna use two carrots, it's gonna be up to you the amount of vegetables that you like. You're cooking for two different styles of food. One of them has a name, one of them does it. Easier when you're grabbing your spoons. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cloud doesn't care if she mentioned, but you know, you never know who you're gonna be cooking for. You need to be prepared for that and respect people's dietary preferences, right? I'm gonna continue cooking both of them for about five minutes and then I'm gonna turn them off um, and they're probably going to be done while I'm making the empanadas, uh, but just cook them five more minutes and then uh, turn it off, okay? If you have a family member that likes their lentils with more liquid, like my sister does, and a few of the steps, because we're not done with the soup, there's still two more steps to add. Um, add, add an extra amount of water. Right here I have about a cup and a half of water, because my sister likes them very, very soupy. difference that I made for this recipe guys for this style empanada um, you guys saw the ingredients it's just slightly different and it's good to adjust to whatever recipe you're making your empanadas for if you guys would like a more in-depth empanada recipe I'll link it in the description and at the end I already got started on a few of my empanadas now let me show you how to do it and if you don't have a tortilla press in that video I show you how to do it without Okay. You guys know I tend to overstuff my empanadas on your end. On your end. <laughs> on their end? On yeah, their on end? Your, not that end, guys. On your end, take it easy, okay? Take it easy on the sauce. I wanna, you know what? My eyes wanna eat it all, so they overdo it, okay? So now let's go ahead, put it together so we can seal it. There's different ways to doing it. I know that this way helps out a lot when you seal it this way for the empanada. You can make a design at the end, but today I'm just gonna press them in, just like that. So the blend I gave you can make you about, depending on the size that you're making them, if you're making them huge like I did, mine are about, I want to say, three inches. Yeah, about three inches. Um, and I'm making about seven of them. So it's going to depend on the size that you choose and how you, um, the amounts that you make the little balls in. I'm in the process of getting another um, tortilla press because this one's so unbalanced. It's time, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying the way I give you guys my recipes because there's so many options on how you can take one thing and make it into a different kind of meal. And I think that might be helpful for you guys because a lot of you, are, you got, a lot of you guys actually do watch all the video and some people just enjoy watching cooking channels, right? Without having to cook. Either way, I hope I'm giving you guys plenty of ideas so that you can continue to love your family. All right. So I'm going to show you guys how to finish um, the lentil soup and after, and after we finish that part we're going to go ahead and fry these uh, empanadas. Okay our lentils are ready so what we're going to do now 
is this is optional but it really does bring in the flavor I'm not chopping it up finely it's gonna be up to you guys um, but for the kids I'm just gonna put it in whole so that it can give a really good flavor and I'm gonna do it to both of the recipes same thing for this one we're gonna add the little bunch So once you've added your cilantro to your recipe, you want to bring your pot to a medium hot, okay? And it's going to allow this to boil. And if you like eggs in your lentil soup, this is a time when you want to add it, okay? So you're going to add one. And if your family member likes two eggs, add two eggs. We have two people going for this one today. So that quick boil that we're doing in here is going to help... Uh, cook the egg a little bit faster. So once it hits that medium boil, you can turn it off. We just wanted that initial heat to help the egg. And this is going to be ready to serve um, as soon as we're done with our empanada. So let's get to it. You guys already know how I seal my soups in the flavor. I add one ice cube. And what the ice is going to do, it's going to help seal all that delicious flavor that's in here. Okay. You can only do this with a wooden spoon, a wooden chopstick, the cooking spoons work. Dip it in. And if you see the oil is bubbling on the outside, I think you guys can see it there. We're ready to fry! Woo! Yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm ready. Where's my guard? You have your, oh, your guard's over here, girl. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, my loves. And I'm going to say it this way because there was a certain comment that really, it kind of terrified me because... You guys have seen my band-aid fingers. I've burned myself and I've been cooking for a long time. You guys know that I've experimented in the kitchen since I was about four years old. And for those reasons, I feel very compelled to express to you guys the dangers of cooking because there is. For example, I have hot oil, whether it's oil, lard, a boiling pot of water. I always suggest that you guys are very, very careful when you're cooking. If you don't, if you're young and you don't have an adult there, please wait till you have uh, adult supervision because this can be dangerous. Um, I know that a lot of the seasoned chefs, this is like easy work. You guys don't need to know about it, but we definitely have a young generation and we even have older grandpas that are starting to cook too that need those extra tips. So if you guys aren't enjoying those, you can skip through them, but I'm going to keep adding them um, for whoever begins to cook is learning to cook. So you guys know how to be careful, whether it's oil, lard, a uh, boiling pot of water, soup, or even making your eggs. Please be very careful. Now that I'm out of mommy zone and back into cooking, <laughs> I love you guys like a mother. That's the way that I love and I look out for you guys that way. So I like the mommy zone. Do you? <laughs> yeah. You know, when I was younger, I love like the momminess in humans. Yeah. And I just became, you guys, all I played when I was younger was Barbies, puppies, and babies were my thing. So. And when you were asked when you wanted to do when you were, when you grew up, it was I wanted to be a mommy. I wanted to be a mommy. Holy <laughs> smokes. I was ready, guys. <laughs> you would think that I would have like five or six children, but you guys, for me, it's a little bit different. I mean, I could have had six, seven children, but having two children is a lot of work. And I want to make sure I put two wonderful gentlemen that are ready to begin with a good family and hopefully meet one of our... You know, Youth Club Junior, anybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adopt a, a baby. Yep, that's true. If not, I'll go hang out with you guys with all those luscious, beautiful babies. I'll take care of kids. <laughs> yeah, you do. You, you're, you know what? If people kids. think I'm a baby lover, you take the cake for that one. Okay. You really do. All right, guys, let's get to cooking. Gently drop it and move it a little bit so it doesn't stick to the bottom. So for this particular one, I'm not going to overcrowd anything. I'm only going to go with two. And you kind of want to see how big your pan is. So if you have a smaller one, do it with one. You're not overflowing anything and you're paying attention to all of your pieces. All your empanadas in this case. What kind of oil is this? Um, I tend to cook with uh, canola oil. You guys, I don't really use vegetable oil. Um, and if I'm using anything different, I'll let you guys know. I love frying with peanut oil, but we do have a peanut allergy in the house, so I stay away from it. And if you guys don't have peanut allergies and you want your food to be super crispy, peanut oil is the one to go with. 
But well, when that family member is gone, we do fry things in. Yes, oil. we do. The other thing is that you're gonna have a lot of gassy bears in your house, so watch out. With peanuts. peanut oil? Yes, peanut oil. Oh, girl, why didn't you tell me that before? <laughs> I'm using my judgment here. I have enough space. I have an ample area to go ahead and add another empanada. And see guys, I make mistakes often. I overestimate it on my quantity and get, see? But it's still gonna be good. That was the, I did an empanada with my eyes closed challenge. Really? <laughs> so sure. <laughs> no, I, I, I over did the, the filling on that one, but. You did good for being blindfolded on that one. <laughs> if you guys see here, I'm using my A carton to drip the oil off of my empanadas. Um, you can use a uh, your paper towels, however you want to do it, but save these. These are very helpful for this particular reason. Thanks to my mother-in-law, I learned that. I wish I would have learned that when I was younger because growing up, having paper towels was a luxury. They were super pricey. I think there still are, but I think that's an adequate amount we should pay if we're using trees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your mother-in-law's a beast in the kitchen, man. I got the privilege to eat her food. Was yes, she was. Amazing. I'm gonna say top three, actually. Top three? Top three. Her I'm gonna agree. Top three. There was only one thing that I ate that she mm -hmm. made that I could not handle it, and Robert the same way. That particular dish was just not her thing. Everything else other than that, 100. There are certain family members that like their empanadas just as soon as they turn golden. Me, if you notice when I cook, when it's something for myself, I like to overcook things. I don't know why. It's a habit for my liking and my taste buds. But for everybody else, you're going to want to cook it three to four minutes. And it should be a perfect amount of time uh, to cook these empanadas for us. Okay? That's true because when I make things um, for you, I my instinct is to take it out. And then I'm like, okay, I would normally take it out now, but I need to keep it in longer for Seth. For me, yeah, it yeah. would be a little bit longer. You know who's the same way? Bayo. Mm -hmm. Bayo yep. the same way. I suppose uh, maybe for a couple of things. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when I had um, certain friends at school mm -hmm. and like I went over to their house and their parents made something, I had a very difficult time because we were taught you eat everything that you're presented and you're not rude. Oh, yeah. Um, but there were just two things that were still considered raw to me. And I was like, oh gosh, I got to eat it. What was it? Tell me, girl. I can't. I don't want to oh. say it because if they ever watch this, they're going to be like, oh my God, you didn't like my mother's cooking. I'm turning off the camera. You're going to tell me. <laughs> You can see the little cheese in that one. Ooh, you guys are ready. All right, Paul, if you're watching this, this empanada style would be perfect for you to pre-make them, put them in your freezer, and fry them up when you're ready. You single bachelor you um, because all you need is a few ingredients. Remember I mentioned to you to keep maseca around? Well, you can stuff it with just about anything. So that, that's tip for you, Paul. If Paul joins us for this one, I'll um, I'll pin your comments so everybody knows who you are. He's a single bachelor by choice. We're trying to start the Views Club connection here, guys. <laughs> I have experience. If you need my my help with starting a something similar to Match.com on the Views Club. Yep, Views Club. <laughs> if you guys want Cloud to show you how to set up your your mingling devices. <laughs> But you don't do Tinder, do you? You don't swipe? No, no, Is that for like super young kids? I don't know. That's for something that requires like immediate physical Yes. If you guys want, if you guys want to learn how to use Tinder, I know somebody that uses Tinder. Oh, and they really? can probably, yeah, Justine. Oh, okay. She, I think she mentioned it in a few videos. Yeah, mm -hmm. eat with Justine. If you guys check her out. She does a mukbang eating show and she's just so loving. I'm just so blessed to have met her. She I don't so know wonderful. her personally, but I feel like if somebody's skipping out on her, they are losing out. I agree, dude. Yeah, she's she is. Amazing. She's one of those gems, like, always happy, always smiling. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Justine, if you're watching this, I adore you, girl. I love you too, girl. You don't know yes. me, but I love you. 
So yeah, now we're just gonna wait and finish frying these up, guys. Yeah. And I have a pick. I have picky eaters, okay? So I accommodate for everybody. You guys want me to show you how I'm gonna alternate for the ones that don't want these? Let me show you real quick. You guys wonder how I do it? Well, I freeze. Let me show you. Let me open my little pack. I make little taquitos. You can make them out of beef, chicken, whatever you want. And I roll them up, put them in the freezer, and whenever I need to make a quick meal, these are ready. You can bake them or you can fry them. And those are a bit of a, a pain to make because if you don't do them well, they'll fall apart in your fryer. Yeah, and that's how you want to make a lot at a the lot. same time, right? Yeah. These are the times when I have like a little assembly on my island and when the family's hanging around, I get everybody together, the kids, everybody's helping out. I do the rolling, but they help like chop and do the mixing putting on the top it's a little assembly so I can foresee the days where I'm not gonna have a lot of time especially um, this next month of May it's toward the end of uh, school for my kids so I have a lot more things to prepare and also prepare our summertime with activities as well as learning and yeah we, have a road trip coming up. we do have a road trip coming up I'm very spontaneous as a human being that I feel that that keeps me happy although it gets my family to tick so they're kind of over the years are kind of used to me just being very spontaneous and they just roll with it i think they like it I, i'm the only family member that has an issue with it well <laughs> robert needs to have more details you both like details and i like i keep it fun i guess yeah you i do. guess that's why i'm still married <laughs> i'm unpredictable oh my gosh. robert does plan everything so he's a planner detail. oh my goodness i loved his planning style when i had the babies guys because yeah. after you're a mom and you have the babies it's so difficult to even get your brain right with mommy brain i mean i still struggle now guys <laughs> and he makes sure that you never need anything i've noticed that about robert yeah like you're like you'll make a comment like oh i want a new dish of this of some sort or mm -hmm. i broke something yeah and then before you know it he like he's a sweetheart to me <laughs> or if i'm like i ran out of this ingredient he'll go to the store and stop by to get something for whatever and he'll be like oh babe look what i got you but then he's like i got you three girl you train i don't him. think he wants girl. me to go anywhere guys <laughs> that's he's... anticipating needs you train yeah <laughs> uh one of the other things you can do for your empanadas when they're done is get a pinch of salt and sprinkle it right when it comes out and that's going to help salt it up even more and give you that um golden fry crisp Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna run out for this. You're on your own. Really? Just because it has a little icicle stuff? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna fry these up real quick, guys, and then I'm gonna plate. I know, guys, I totally skipped out on putting a video of this wonderful little fella. I would like to present you guys with Ari. Can you please give everybody his full name, Club? Ari Olivier PSG. So this is a new member. This is my new fur godchild, and he's super sweet, guys. Um, he is a rescue little guy. Um, he kind of looks like a lemur. I don't want to body shame him, so I'll just turn slightly. Uh, he has a tail that's kind of like a fox, so I love it. Oh, there, there, there. You don't have to be camera shy, ready? His eyes are, are reflective. That's why I started calling him a lemur. Mm -hmm. He's got those lemur eyes at night. Yeah. He, you guys, in a period of a few days, a week, however long, how long have you had him? Um, under two weeks. Under two weeks. I fell in love with him. He's just the sweetest little guy in the whole world, and he likes to be loved and caressed. He loves kids, adults, cats, he, birds. Yeah, he loves kids. <laughs> Our previous family member didn't like children too much. Hey, he tolerated hey, hey. them, but he wasn't crazy. And he will just get really excited to see cutie and stranger danger. He'll go with anyone. Mm -hmm. He loves to wander. He's really enjoying his balcony sitting with his Nina, his godmother. Yeah. All right. I'll is that it? it? His fur is so soft and he's just so cuddly. And I don't know, guys, he passes out so often. He got a checkup from the doctor. He's in good health. Um, his heart's good. Everything's good for him. So, mm -hmm. why don't you guys take time to meet him? Look at look at his face. He's like, eh. Are we done? He's under a little bit of medication though, because of his uh, his like little respiratory uh -huh. situation. But he'll be okay. What do you smell? You smell my cookie. You can't have that. He's wonderful. 
You can't have that, but you can have your puppy food. Even though he's not a puppy, guys. He's eight. He's eight. My sister's so sweet. Like, there's a lot of people that won't even adopt an older dog, and you're just so, you're really good with, like, the older dogs. He had the whole ASPCA look going for him with flies around him. I mean, you saw it. Yes. <laughs> you're, you have a really good heart for taking him in, Cloud. Shout out to your mama. He's the Let's one give that, you back. He's the one that saves Wash my hands real quick. My little life. Thank you. Come on, sweetie. Let's go behind the camera. And that's how I make lentil soup. If you guys like this recipe, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, take the time to subscribe right here and next to where you see a little bell. And to become one of my bells, click that bell. It sends you notifications when I upload because I know with the YouTube feed, I can get lost in there. So... Let's go ahead and taste this delicious soup. Also, if you guys are making uh, these recipes, please continue to send them to me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, this month, I'm a little bit tight on my time, but I'm definitely checking in there uh, for your guys' recipe so we can add them right here. All right, guys, this soup is delicious. If you're not a lentil lover, definitely give it a try with bacon. And even the vegetarian option is going to be great. My tip to you is going to be, if you're going to make this soup and you don't want it too sweet, take it easy on your portion for the carrots because the carrots will make it taste like canned soup. So take it easy with the carrots. Other than that, everything's going to be pretty simple, just how I show you guys. I want to thank you guys all so much. I'm looking at the subscriber count, and I am just speechless like if i think about it too long i'll start crying so on that note i want to thank you guys so much for joining my channel and being part of the views club and being part of my life i i respect and adore you guys more than you'll ever understand and i'll see you guys on the next one bye